Hello, welcome to my webpage. You folks may know me directly or indirectly through family and friends, but I welcome you all. I like to first introduce myself and give a little background information on why I like to go to Afghanistan and help these children. So, my name is Miriam Hashimi. I'm an, under, I'm an undergraduate student at the University of California, Berkeley, and I am pursuing a molecular and cell biology major and a global poverty minor. I have been fortunate enough to engage in Professor Ananya Roy's lectures on theoretical debates and methodological approaches on poverty alleviation and gender inequality. One of the requirements of this minor is that you do a field experience, either internationally or domestically, in an attempt to apply what we have learned in the classroom setting. My choice, of course, is Afghanistan. Currently, I'm enrolled in a class that prepares us for this particular region by giving us analytical tools on how to evaluate the circumstances that we will be in and engage in problem solving. So why Afghanistan? Why do I want to go to the motherland? Well, partially because of my Afghani heritage. I am, in fact, half Afghan and half German. But there is a larger underlying reason why, and that's ignorance. Ignorance being the infectious disease that consumes us all. And I'll explain. Let's date back to September 11th, 2001, the date the Twin Towers were attacked. This tragic day suddenly bold-faced words such as Taliban, Islamophobia, terrorist, and Al-Qaeda. Afghanistan was no longer just a country pictured on a map. No, 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 no. Now it was associated with animosity, war, destruction, and turmoil. People with tan skin color and funny names were now scrutinized and ridiculed on a daily basis. And unfortunately, I was one of them. In fact, in high school, I was actually called a Nazi terrorist, believe it or not. So why was I a victim of this generalization? Why was I stereotyped in this manner? One word. Ignorance. As a result, I was outcasted amongst my peers. I was embarrassed to admit my heritage. And worst of all, I could not defend my Afghan people. Why? Because their ignorance foddered my ignorance. So what did I do? I knew Afghan people were more of substance than what the media portrayed them to be. I went out and educated myself. I learned about the history of Afghanistan, why ethnic tensions arise in Afghanistan, and how Afghanistan was used as a tool and fighting ground for large political powers such as the U.S. and Russia, for example. Lastly, I learned that Afghani people were oppressed. Not the same oppression that I felt, but oppressed nevertheless. And ironically, the Afghan people that did manage to escape their fate in Afghanistan and come to the U.S. to pursue an American dream were still oppressed here. So I found a link. I found a connection that linked us all. Moreover, I do admit I like to live vicariously through my father's stories. I was one of those girls who always sat on daddy's lap and listened to him reminisce about his childhood and his adolescence. And he always told me stories about how anar, which is pomegranate, was as big as his head. And how the streets of Afghanistan were filled with the smell of gushtalandi, which is lamb. And how he lived in the house as big as a soccer field that accommodated not only his family, his intermediate family, but his cousins, his aunties, his uncles, his, his neighbors, strangers, everybody. And I truly admired that about him, my family, and Afghan people in general. So I like to go to Afghanistan to educate these children, to educate them that it's okay to be different to accept people for whom they are, 
to live in a world where Hezare, Tajik, Pashtun, Nuristani all got along together in a collective environment and interacted in unity. Whether they were Sunni, whether they were Shia, whether they were black, yellow, white, polka dot, it didn't matter. To live in a world where women and girls were seen as equal to men and boys. We must foster an environment and educate these Afghan children in an attempt to create a new generation of Afghans to run a prospective democratic society. Of SICO, Afghan Child Education and Care Organization, the NGO that I will be going with, has provided just that. So in closing, not only must we educate Afghan children, children in schools, and our own children, but we must educate our peers, our, our uh, friends, our families, enemies, our loved ones, and the elderly. We must try to abolish the ignorance that lingers in our subconscious mind. So, that being said, I'd like to thank any of you for your, I'd like to thank you for your generosity for taking a look at my webpage. There is some more information listed below and a breakdown of my budget. Any additional proceeds that I'll be receiving will be donated to the organization. So you, essentially are contributing to the rebuilding of Afghanistan and to assisting these children. Thank you very much. Khudafis.